This video has been a long time in the making, well over a year now, since I have had a Schmeiser SP15 straight pull UK version here at the Rat Cave. This, by the way, is my own, this one is. And that's partly the reason why I've wanted to really take my time with this video, rather than just, you know, it be a loner that I've had for a month and just chucking loads of rounds through it. I wanted to give this a full on test. It, it is a high end, expensive, um, well, not expensive. It's just a high end straight pull AR here in the UK. I'd say probably one of the best, and I think I've used just about all of them. I'd say this is one of the best, okay? Yeah, you can get the real expensive one. What is it, the Fix by Q? Not really sort of a, dare I say it, military style AR. It's more of a, um, I don't know, more of a Gucci AR rifle. It's not, well, it's not really an AR. It's not got an upper and a lower, so to speak. But it's, it's AR pattern anyway, but more of an AR-10, I guess, with that being the 308, the fix by Q. But the Schmeisers, finally, I've got them on the table. And like I said, I've been taking my time with this. It's, you know, it's been one of those, well, we kind of had lockdown between, uh, between when I first got one in here at the Rat Cave and then going out to sort of, you know, really sort of test it. So that's partly the reason. But no, I've just, I have really wanted to take my time with this and get this one, get as much info and as much data as I can on this. So it's been, it's been interesting. So, just thought I'd get that out of the way. Do you like the spread on the table? I thought I'd go a bit sort of arty on this one. Yeah, all right. I threw a few mags on the table and a couple of rifles. Not really arty, but it is for me. Anyway. Welcome to this video. Hi guys, this is Rack and Load. You should know that by now. If you ain't subbed, hit that subscribe button. For God's sake, what are you doing? You know, it gives me a bit more motivation to pump the videos out. So let's throw this one out. This is the Gen 2. You have no doubt seen my video on the Gen 1. The Gen 1 was pretty much the same as the Gen 2. The main obvious one on the Gen 1 was key mod, and I did sort of suggest this to Schmeiser when they were doing the Gen 2. I was like, come on, key mod, really? Really? Let's go M-Lock. I know, I mean, you've got Accuracy International, haven't you? Which is a famous, famous British band. Band? Famous British brand, when I can say it. They're still using key mod. Mm, I don't know, I think they really need to go M lock, but who cares? I mean, really, how much stuff do you actually bolt to your AR 15? We'll get onto that when I talk about the handguard, right? Then let's go into a bit of detail. Then, as far as specs go, now let me just grab one of Schmeiser's uh, pamphlets. It's a bit of an out of date one, but it's still got the uh, it's still got these rifles in okay although actually they are yeah they are gen ones okay but because the key mod but i'll roll in a bit of footage of their website the latest stuff right first of all this is the sp15 this is my own it has got a few other bits on that you won't get on your standard rifle i'll talk about them in a minute but this is the 16 inch version I have also got here an 18 inch LMR SP15, okay, which has got a different barrel on it. As far as length is concerned, it's 18 inch, got a different muzzle brake, fluting in the barrel or on the barrel, slightly thicker barrel as well, okay. Let me just throw out your basic, um, your basic specs. So both of them are straight pull, both of them are chambered in 223. Barrel length on the 18 inch is, believe it or not, 18 inches, okay, <laughs> or 46 centimeters. The total length is 93 centimeters or 36.6 inches, weighing in at 3.9 grams, okay, so just under four, four grams. 
3.9 kilograms or 3,950 grams, okay? So work that out if you're, you're still in old school, okay? The, they do do the uh, SP15 M4 FL, which is slightly shorter, okay? Which is not this one, this is a 16 inch. They do do, I think it's the 14 inch, so it's quite a bit, quite a bit shorter, okay? Specs on that, uh, 3.2 kilograms, overall length, 14 and a half, sorry, barrel length, 14 and a half inches, total length is 75 and a half centimeters, okay? Or 31.3 inches, unless you extend the, uh, the rear stock, then it goes out a couple more inches, okay? I'm not gonna go real sort of finicky on that one. Um, and also they do an ultra match as well, which, is, which has a 20 inch barrel. Now I'll show you on this one, it's also got the chrome barrel, okay? Now, this is where it gets interesting because, uh, I've got to throw this out. I did make a mistake in one of, in my first video of this particular rifle. I don't know whether it was this one or the Gen 1 actually, can't think. But I was told and I read in the brochures that these were one in eight twists, the barrel rate, the barrel twist rates were. They are not, they are one in nine twist. The chrome barrel is a one in eight twist. All the others are one in nine, okay? The UK importer also got that wrong on a lot of their spec sheets, okay? And it has only just been rectified, so I am aware as I work in the trade and I get to kind of know these things. So there was a lot of, misinformation out there about the twist rates and I think that's caused a few little issues with people that have bought these rifles where they've developed a load for it uh, before and if they've had one of these on order and uh, they've kind of been missold the rifle due to what it said you know it's like I don't know buying a two and a half litre BMW and to find out that it's only got 1.8 and you'd be a little bit pissed, wouldn't you? Yeah, but would it have really bothered me if I'd found that out, already owning one? No, not really. Even if I reloaded, which I don't, by the way, I would have just adjusted my reloads or just, it, or just adjusted the ammunition that I was using, okay? I would have just put up with it. That's just me, but, you know, other people, I guess, a little bit more finicky I guess you know it's each to his own each to his own so one in nine twist rate let me stress one in nine twist rate on the uh, the SP15 the LMR and uh, the M4 FL one in nine twist if it's got a chrome barrel an ultra match which I don't believe the chrome barrel ones are in the UK anyway okay if you're in the UK, which is a one in eight twist, okay? God, thank God we've got, got that out of the way. That is pretty much your specs. Well, there's a few other little bits. Worth noting as well, by the way, uh, as we speak, 2021, okay? Later on in the year, here in the UK, a straight pull nine mil is coming. Oh yes, you will see one of those on the channel. Let me tell you. Coming around Christmas time, dear Santa, that's all I'm gonna say. Right then, so let me let me sort of show you around uh, this one first. This is my own, so I know a, bit, a little bit more about it. This one's kindly on loan from Livin's uh, gun shop here in the UK. Now, I've got to thought there's a cobweb on there then. Now, are these things mil spec? Yes, mostly. We discovered, <laughs> Like I said, I work in the trade. We discovered that the actual buffer tube is not mil spec when we tried to fit a mil spec stock on one. It didn't fit, okay? Turns out that the buffer tube, of whether it is the same on all of the Schmeisers or they've just done a few, remains to be seen. 
but the one we had to change a stock on was commercial spec. So we ended up uh, getting the Dremel out a little bit, let's just say. So yeah, the rest of it is pretty much mil spec. You know, if you had got, if you've got uh, a lower off something else, it'll fit, you know, in that sort of sense of the, th the terminology as far as mil spec goes. People get really excited when you say mil spec. Mil spec, if you don't know, is just a dimension. It doesn't mean it's battle proven and the flipping SAS are gonna use it. And it's been through 10 different wars. Mil spec, that does not, that is not what mil spec is about. It's just a dimension, okay, that the military use. It's nothing to get excited about, really it isn't. It makes no difference. Some, some guys that are really into their ARs get super excited about mil spec. It don't mean crap, seriously. All it means is just bits that you can attach to it. You just gotta get the right size. That's all it is, okay? So if you're one of those that get excited about mil spec, chill, seriously, just chill. Right then, so let me walk you around mine then. So basically, what have I done to this one? Well, I'll just show you what I've done to it and then we can sort of talk about the actual uh, Schmeiser itself, the SP15 itself. Now I've already fitted a uh, Magpul pistol grip to it. Why have you done that, Rack? Well, I like them, I just like them. So I fitted, I fitted that, haven't I? So there you go. That's what, that's the one you get. And it's bog standard, by the way, this LMR. So that is the pistol grip you get. No need to change it, beaver tail uh, pistol grip. Rubberized, really quite flexible, as you can see. Very comfortable, okay? But if you're into your Magpul stuff, then you're kind of gonna like it, aren't you? So it is what it is, it is what it is. But no, that's pretty much all I've done to my, to my rifle, okay? Apart from chucking on a scope, I wanna throw on some Magpul um, rail grips there, which just enhance grip. I just thought they're pretty cute. And I've thrown on a Magpul bipod. Check out Rack's full review of that as well. Highly recommended if you've got an AR-15 or any other rifle if you want a nice lightweight bipod. Really, really good. But I think it is suited well on this particular rifle. Now, if you're not aware of what a straight pull is here in the UK, as well, if, wherever you are, it doesn't really matter. It might it might appeal to you where you're actually allowed semi-automatic semi center fires. Basically, here in the UK, we can't have semi-automatic we can't have a semi-automatic rifle above 2.2 WMR or 22 uh, Magnum, basically. Can't go any bigger than that in semi-auto. In bolt action or straight pull, will your oyster. Okay, Wild is your oyster. So basically, you pull the trigger, you take your shot, and you've just got to rack it back like that to eject and uh, you know chamber a new round. I find it pretty economical to shoot, if I'm perfectly honest, okay? It works just like a normal AR-15 apart from that, okay? Everything else works the same. Uh, your safety catch, which is exactly the same. Ambidextrous, you can swap it out if you wanted to. Um, your bolt hold open, everything works. Your mag release. Only slight difference on uh, the Schmeiser. Let me let me just lock the bolt back. So the bolt's locked open there. So imagine you take your last shot and then you pull it back and you eject it. When the magazine's in, it will just hold it open like that. Okay. So when you put your new mag in, you can either you've got several options. You can either press that your normal bolt release like you get you know, which everyone's kind of used to. Or you've got this one here. So this lever here. So if you, right, fingers out of the way, right? If you push that down, that locks it forward as well. Or, let me lock it back again. He says, oh, I'm pressing the mag, mag release there. Or you can just slingshot it and it'll work, okay? So there is, your operation, pretty much. Like I said, mag release, uh, 
pretty standard AR-15. Quite a big button actually on the Schmeiser, which is nice. You swap it out if you want. You know, the good thing about ARs, you can swap all your bits out. And, you know, upgrade, tinker, kind of what I've done. You know, I say what I've done. I've just, all I've done is change the pistol grip. I didn't really need to do that. It's just that I do like the Magpul stuff, okay? Moving on to, well, let's kind of take it from the top. So let's just do it in order because I'm bouncing all around. So that's a brief sort of explanation of, of, the, of the straight pull and how it works. You can use the T-bar cock in. Uh, it's not as um, fluid as this, this charging handle, okay? You can take this off on the LMR. It's not got it's fitted. All it does, all it is, is just to push, it just pushes in and locks in and you just need like an Allen wrench or you can even do it with a bullet head. You just press a little button down there and it pops back out for storage. So you have no problem sort of storing it in, a, in your cabinet or in your bag. You can just sort of whip that out. Now, so yeah, that, that's a brief, brief sort of, uh, brief description of, of what the uh, straight pull um, is basically. There are several, you, you do get several variations of straight pull here in the UK. Uh, it's like my friend, he's got the old uh, SLR. So that basically operates, he just has to use the usual sort of charging handle on it um, of the SLR. Uh, you know, the cocking handle, it just you has to use that for each shot. You can get AKs where you've got a, you've just got to rack them each time you've fired a shot. Get other AR-15s. I don't think they're as nice as this. The Calibre Innovations do the Siskar, which is a great, great rifle, by the way. Similar to this, but theirs is a straight bar sticking out. I do like that. What I don't like on some rifles is where they have like this Meccano attachment where it looks like some, some kids just made it in the blooming in the metal workshop um, where it just looks like a piece of Meccano sort of dog legged out. I think they look horrible. All right, they're, they're probably, you know, bang on it as way, you know, in the way of uh, operation goes, but they don't look great, do they? Seriously. And I just love this. You can work it pretty fast as well, especially if you're a lefty, by the way. You, you've got even more of an advantage. You can literally just keep your hand on it and, you know, shoot and cock and shoot and cock. So it's quite, quite cool. I don't know, the, uh, the beauty of being a lefty. It sometimes has its advantage. Right then, taking it from the top then. We're probably about 10 minutes into this video already. So taking it from the top, from the stock. Okay, so pretty standard AR-15 collapsible stock. Six position, I think it is. Yeah, it's about six position. So you can go pretty short with it. Pretty long. Schmeiser's own stock there. Semi-soft rubber on the recoil pad. You don't really need it. It's 223 at the end of the day. So Schmeiser's logo there. Comspec. I should have bought calipers just to measure that, but as far as I know, that's comm spec, okay? QD attachment right there if you want to sling this thing. So that is a real nice option. There's your castle nut there. Like I said, your cocking or your T-bar cocking lever there. You can use it if you want, if you want to keep things nice and slick um, and looking slick rather, but ah, no, it, it didn't work for me. I found it a bit awkward. Um, pulling that back. I remember what rifle did I use a number of years back? Oh God, it was awful. What was it now? It'll come to me. I'll, I'll put it in the. I'll put it in the video across the screen. Oh, what was it? Oh, CMMG. It was a CMMG. Oh my God, that thing was awful. It was 308 as well, and it was a T-bar cocking. So it was an AR10 308 cocking that thing once it got hot using the T-bar, oh, seriously, dude, I nearly had to use the T-bar as a pogo stick just to get the spent brass out of the chamber. It was just, no, 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 no. I wasn't happy with that thing. And then moving along to the rest of, well, this is where, the, you know, 
where the magic happens, so to speak. Mil spec AR15 upper and lower, okay? I believe these are billet, okay? Not forged, they, I believe they are billet, unless that information is wrong as well. But you can only go off people's information, can't you guys? You know, it's not like you can sort of scrape a bit off it and extract the DNA and see what it's, the truth about it is. So billet, which is kind of good, so that means it's basically been a block of aluminium and it's all been machined out, which, which is nice. Do like that. Do like it. Doesn't make any difference to me. <laughs> Not particularly, you know. Like I say, I ain't going into battle with this thing. So, but everything's rock solid. Nothing wobbles. Pretty damn solid, okay? You, as my scope falls off. Um, and then, so, let, shall we break it open? Oh, let's break it open. You know, you know you want to. Let's move some of these mags. I'll show you the magazines in a minute. The ones that you get, okay? So let's just pull a, a pin open out, break the upper from the lower. So there are your guts, there's your trigger mech. Okay, so standard AR, uh, AR15 trigger mech, so you can upgrade that if you wanted to. Do you need to? No, not really. No, you don't. Working buffer tube in there, well I say, well yeah, it does work in there, it is a working buffer tube. It does actually work when you cock this rifle, okay? Because obviously you've got to pull, you've got to pull this back, so that it, that actually does operate the, uh, the buffer tube, okay? You can get, because the buffer tube that's in it is basically designed for semi-auto, okay? It doesn't really need to have the spring, the high, uh, high tensile spring, high tensile, the strong spring. That's the word I'm looking for. It doesn't really need to have the strong spring in there because you're not running this thing semi-auto. You can get upgrade kits where I believe the spring is slightly weaker and it's plastic stroke polymer or nylon parts in there that make things quieter when you are cocking it and a lot more smoother. I've not upgraded it to, to that. Uh, maybe maybe I will, I don't know. It depends. depends whether you're using this for hunting. I know these things appeal to the guys who like to do a bit of foxing. So it's a good caliber to have for foxing, you know, so just sort of, just sort of saying. Let's push the, uh, the bolt out there. I can't take it all the way out because I will on the other one because uh, I've still got the charging handle in there, but Everything is super slick, okay? It feels really, really good. German quality, I mean, what can you say? What can you say? So that's your guts, okay? Everything is solid in there, rock solid. Magwell, pretty standard. Show you down there. Oh God, this is getting heavy, guys, this is getting heavy. Um, trigger, the trigger is excellent on the schmeisers okay absolutely excellent it is two stage let me just remind myself what it is like oh i've got a safety catch on that'll probably yeah this the trigger is really nice let's give it a measure you know you want to you know you want to right oh what's this pulling place your bets First stage. Oh, that's quite heavy. I didn't think it'd be heavy as that. As heavy as that. Six and a half pounds thereabouts. Can you tinker with it? Yeah, I think you can. Would you drop another one in? No, I don't think so. Would you bother tinkering with it? No, I wouldn't. I'm quite happy with it. Quite happy with it. Right then, I've, also, I've already mentioned the controls. So you've got your standard standard sort of AR-15 style uh, safety catch there. Okay, clearly marked red for hot and white for safe. Um, magazine release there. You've got that separate uh, control there for your bolt release, which I really like. That makes this thing more ambidextrous, which is awesome. On the other side, 
you've got the ambidextrous mag release again awesome totally love that okay you've got your other bolt release there you know you've got you've got three choices you've got your but well you i suppose you've kind of got four really you got that bolt release okay you've got your t-bar if you yank that back and just let it go that'll slingshot it you've got this lever here which will release the bolt or you can just pull back on it when it's back here and that'll and slingshot it basically and that will charge the rifle so options 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 okay that is really really cool loads of picatinny rail full length picatinny rail as you can see uh Mm, you can ask me whether there's MOA built in this. Uh, uh, pass. I should know that by now, shouldn't I? <laughs> I'll put that in the details of the video. Um, the handguard. Thank God they've changed it to M-Lock from Keymod. Nothing wrong with Keymod, but I think M-Lock is the way forward, okay? You do get a piece of m-lock picatinny rail in with the rifle which you can attach anywhere so you can basically put that on the bottom for your bipod or unless you get a magpul bipod that is already m-lock compatible then you'll just bang that straight on the rail like what i've done okay but i love the handguard really do like it it is comfortable i yes i've enhanced it a little bit with these grips just to Make it a bit more grippy for when I sometimes do a bit of run and gun. So that is really cool. I find, you know, you've got to upgrade it a little bit, haven't you? Uh, the barrel is, if you can see it in there, quite a thick profile. It's not a uh, uh, knit and needle profile. So that is really good. So it does get hot. If you start running a lot of rounds through it, it does get hot. But I believe these barrels are guaranteed for 20,000 rounds. 20,000 rounds, that is pretty damn good. I don't think I am ever gonna get through 20,000 rounds. Or should I just make that my goal? Yeah, maybe I should. But yeah, that is good. Guaranteed for 20,000 rounds. That is insane. Unless we've got that information wrong as well. Hopefully not. Not me, not me. This is just the information that I'm told. Uh, the muzzle brake, or well, more of a flash hider on uh, the SP15 on the 16 inch, really quite effective. Uh, looks pretty cool, looks pretty badass as well. So, really, really cool. I do like that. So, that is pretty much the, the 16 inch version. Magazines, I'm gonna show you this one in a minute, don't worry guys. Magazines, now the magazines you get, I believe with this one, you just get the one magazine, which is just a 10 round magazine, okay? And it's Schmeiser's own, uh, all polymer in construction, and they are really good. Nothing wrong with them at all. I'd advise getting if you like PMAG, get yourself a PMAG, uh, a PMAG, Magpul PMAG. If you like Magpul, get a PMAG. I said that the wrong way around. Yeah, these Mag, Magpul PMAGs are really excellent. They are pretty much, pretty much the same. I think Schmeiser are more or less. There ain't a lot of difference, a little bit squarer here, but not a great deal of difference. But definitely advise getting, this is a 30 round magazine okay definitely get get one of them or if like me you know when you was a kid and you used to go around the army surplus stores buying magazines as as souvenirs and or as paperweights or decoration as your bedroom you discover one day when you're clearing out your loft it's like oh my god i've got a load of surplus magazines and guess what they fit i think these are like i don't know what they are i don't know whether they're SA80 magazines or something, I don't know. But they fit and they work well because I've used them all. So that was a bonus. That one's a bit tight, actually. Let's try that one. That one's a bit better. So I've got like a, you know, a few magazines, which is nice. I think these ones are 25 rounders. Could be 30s, I don't know, I can't remember. 
So yeah, bonus. If you've got old surplus magazines lying about, they'll fit, which is really cool. Really, really cool. Now, let's show you. Well, I'll tell you what, we'll, we'll sort of break it up a little bit. We'll talk about accuracy, accuracy. Now, this is where it gets kind of interesting. And this is why I have wanted to take my time with this review because it has took a bit of um, experimenting and a bit of discovery to finally get around that this rifle likes, okay? And it's been quite surprising because a lot of the AR-15 guys will say, oh, you know, you, you've got to run like 68, 69 grain rounds through it. They're the only ones that work. Uh, not on my gun, not on my gun. <laughs> now, let me show you, I think I'll show you the, uh, now this is quite, it's not great if I'm perfectly honest, this first, this is the first target. Now, I've experimented with a load of ammo, okay? A load of ammo. I forgot all the boxes here. If I can sort of catch an eye of the box, I'll grab it and show you. So, ignore that target. So, and uh, please excuse the mod on this target. RWS soft points, 55 grain. This is 100 yards. There was a bit of a crosswind, about 10 to 15 mile an hour wind. That's the direction of the wind. Okay, five shot groups these are. Mm, okay, now this is when I've, I've probably put, I've probably put about a thousand, put a good thousand rounds through this rifle now, okay. This was probably a target that I did at about 400, four or 500 rounds just to sort of start experimenting with it. They are guaranteed so by my way with, I forget what ammo it is, straight out of the factory, okay? You'll find that in your manual or on uh, on Smizer's website. But I like to just experiment, you know, it's what I do, it's what I do. So I use some, I thought, you know what, I'm not gonna listen to what everyone says, I'm just gonna try a selection of different weights. So that was 55 grain. Then I went a bit heavier. Uh, this was Hornaday ammunition, 75 grain. Okay, 100 yards, bit of a crosswind. And then I did, now this, while I, while I mentioned this, this is gonna be ongoing, this experimentation is. So there's gonna be further videos with this and uh, I'll roll in footage of, uh, of other targets that I've done and the results that I've got with this rifle, okay? Now, then I used, same rifle again, okay? This is, I think this is on the same day, yeah, because I've got the same wind um, wind data here. Uh, PPU, hollow point boat tails, 69 grains. Yes, I know, it's me shooting, so that can make all the difference, okay? So, mm, yeah, not as tight as it should be. Bit of a crosswind, could be me, could be the environment. Um, don't know whether it's the rifle. Don't know, don't know. I don't think it is. I think it's partly the ammo, the, the uh, environmental uh, factors, and me, okay? <laughs> then I'm gonna, I'm gonna sort of miss the good one a minute. And then uh, this was a bit surprising, okay? This, that's hence the unhappy face and the what the flipping heck. Hornaday match, 68 grain. Boat tail hollow points. They were spreading a little bit, as you can see. And there as well, look at that, look at that flyer. Unless it, there was a bit of a gust down range and it took that, I don't know. So they were all your sort of kind of recommended, apart from that 55 grain on the other target, kind of recommended weights. And then I put Federal 55 grain solid point, hollow points even, which I thought was gonna be absolute crap. Cheap plinking ammo. And I goes and gets this. And I'm like, oh my God. That is the one that this rifle likes. The point of this story is experiment with your ammo, okay? Don't take what people say, just grab a load of different ammo and just Try, play, experiment, run it in. 
and see what happens and you'll be amazed. So at the minute, to everyone's surprise, I'm sticking with 55 grains. My rifle seems to like it. That rifle probably doesn't. Bit of a heavier, heavier barrel, slightly heavier barrel. Same twist rate, but... <sighs> Don't know, I'll leave that one with you guys. Discuss. So yeah, accuracy, pretty damn good. It'll get better as you as you use it. As if you reload, you've got you're gonna be experimenting anyway. If you're just using factory stuff, you're gonna you're still gonna be experimenting. Just run your gun in a little bit, you know, don't get it straight out of the box and take it to the range and like, oh dude, it's not doing MOA straight out of the box. Although it is guaranteed, I'm always a little bit skeptical about that. In my experience, I'm pretty damn ex uh, you know, I'm, I'm a little bit suspect when uh, companies say that. I think I've only had that once actually, and that was with my CZ457, and that was sub MOA, straight out of the box. That, that thing was amazing. Literally first shots, once I zeroed it, that was sub MOA. But it is what it is, guys, it is what it is. Yeah, that's the scope I was using. I, had, I did use a loophole on this rifle as well. Um, and I swapped scopes just to sort of throw throw different sort of factors in, see if it would change anything. But interesting, don't you think? I think so. Let's talk about the LMR then. So the LMR is slightly different. So we'll go from this end first. You've got a heavier barrel. You've got a break for a start, which barks a little bit louder than what this thing does, okay? Same handguard, 18 inches though. So the handguard on this is actually the same size, but you've just got a slightly longer barrel. Fluted barrel, heavier barrel, okay? Which is gonna be potentially more accurate, potentially. Upper and lower, exactly the same. No, no difference there. This one's still got a 10 round magazine in. Obviously, it's empty, guys, obviously. See how it locks back like that on the magazine, and then if you've got, got one in, you can sort of chamber it like that and trap your fingers. So once you've fired your last shot, like I explained about this one, it holds open. And then you've got all these options, haven't you, where you can slingshot it with the bar if you've got it fitted. You can slingshot it with the... Um... Oh, no, you're right, and you can't slingshot it with... With the T-bar, you can either press that or you can press that, okay? Let's just fire that off. So, upper and lower, handguard, everything else is the same, apart from the barrel and the muzzle brake. But then when it goes, it goes a little bit different then with the stock, which is a non-adjustable stock. Same sort of, well, slightly wider than the standard one that you get on the SP15. Um, people, this might appeal to more of the target shooters. You know, I think this one is more, this one will probably appeal more in the UK to someone who wants to do a bit of foxing and target shooting. Whereas this, more sort of target orientated, I think. Non-adjustable, I do like it though. I do I do like all, all the polymer on it. You know, it's just it's just pretty sort of rugged, all polymer, rock solid. None, no adjustability there. Would that bother me? Uh, if I can shoot the rifle, then there's plenty of uh, real estate there to get my face down on it. So it doesn't really bother me. It doesn't really bother me. QD cups there, either side. So kind of ambi which I like that. And then this is where it gets interesting and I do like this. And the beauty of this one as well is you get, uh, he says, probably can't get it out because it's, I'm, I'm holding it up that way. But you get another magazine. Oh, there we go. If you press both of them, you get a spare magazine in the stock. How cool is that? So you get two 10 round magazines with the LMR. So, that is really cool. 
really cool. So interestingly as well, the LMR, uh, the Ultra Match, which I haven't got here, and the SP15, and the, uh, what is it, the F, the M4 FL, they're all exactly the same price here in the UK. So which one do you go for? Do you go for the heavy barrel, where you get more barrel, and another magazine? Would you go for a short one, where you get a bit of less? Would you go mediocre? It's all the same price. Decisions, decisions. I kind of, I kind of wish myself I'd gone for this one now, but ah, it is what it is. It is what it is. I'm happy with this. I'm running this in nicely. I've found out what ammo it likes. Life is good. Life is good. Right. What do you get in the box? Right. First of all, I'm going to show you the box. Now, this is a bonus straight away. Schmeiser give you a decent plastic box, a decent one, not the sort that you're just going to chuck in your attic, never to be seen again. It is a decent box that you will actually use and take to the range. It's even got a combination lock on it. How cool is that? Well, let's just open this thing up. Oh God, I've got no room to do this and I'll show you what you get in the box without destroying everything so this is really quite good guys what you do get so we'll, we'll have a look at the manual in a minute first of all you get uh, a bit of paper on how to uh, set your combination you get some cool patches although i had this a year ago and i've not seen the cool patches in the new ones which is a bit disappointing we get a schmeiser patch and you get the freedom fries, dude. Freedom fries, oh yeah. Do you know what? I think they have got to go on the table. We're going to put them on the table. Um, you get a uh, bit of stuff about Schmeiser's uh, website, which is cool. What else? Uh, the two-stage trigger. There's information about the two-stage two trigger there. And then this is really cool, guys. This is so cool. What you get, I've not, I don't think I've actually opened it. Oh, I have, I have. You get a pull through, okay. You get a breech flag. And check this out for a cleaning kit. Look at this cleaning kit that you get as standard. This is not a crappy cleaning kit. Those are brass rods there. You get an oil dropper. You get your little um, handle there, all your brushes, everything you need to clean this rifle. How cool is that? In a decent case as well. 10 points, Schmeiser, okay, 10 points. Let's get the manual out. We're gonna get rid of this. Where are my Freedom Fries? They're there, they're going on the table. Let me just get rid of the box, guys. Man, the Brat Cave is Busy, it is busy at the minute, guys. You would not believe it. Right, let's let's just get these freedom fries out on the table. They, they need to be on display. Aren't they cool? They are so cool. I'm do you know, I'm already thinking I need a tattoo like that. That's just awesome. Freedom fries, we'll put you there. Let's get rid of that bit of paper. Right, the manual. Let's talk about the manual. First of, all, first of all, what I am going to say, the manual is pretty damn excellent. Okay, let's find the English bit. Oh, I think we're at the back. It's the Germans, they are. How rude, putting us English at the back. Only kidding, only kidding. I tell you what, the German engineering and quality is just amazing, amazing. So here is the manual. Check out the pictures there, all in colour. Everything is explained really, really well. I cannot fault the, mag the, the magazine. I cannot fault the manual. Okay, cannot fault. That's what I was going to do. I was going to take the bolt out of that one. I will in a minute show you that. Cleaning kit there. How to separate the upper from the lower, how to strip the bolt. 
How good is that? Really, really impressive. Just flicking through it dead quick, guys. Exploded diagrams, you know I'm a fan. There isn't a full exploded diagram in there, though. I'll let you off. Nine out of ten, Schmeiser, for your manual. Let's break open the LMR. Let's have a look inside. Well, it's going to be exactly the same as the uh, as that one. So let's just take out the. Well, we may as well just take out the charging handle, aren't we? So metal charging handle there. Ambidextrous. Okay. Are you going to really use that? I don't think you are, guys. Seriously, if you, when you get the the actual uh, charging handle, the big one, you're just not going to use it. Not going to use it. Okay, so there is your bolt there. Absolutely solid, well engineered. Nothing, you know, is really going to go wrong on that thing. At the end of the day, it's, I mean, they've run these things in their semi-autos. So, you know, and they're running, they're running full auto as well. So it is what it is. No doubt, obviously, they've had to do something a little bit different. Well, there's no, there's no gas bits and pieces going on in this rifle anyway. So that's why it's not semi-auto. So no, you can't convert it either. So let me just put this back. Oh, this is where this is where it usually goes wrong, guys. Me putting stuff back. There you go. Look at that. There we go. So that's the guts of the LMR. Okay. So yeah, I would highly, highly recommend this rifle. Okay. I really would. If you like your AR-15s, I think the only other one that really does float my boat is I do like the Calibre Innovations Siskar straight pull. For me, that's probably that's probably it. That the the Siskar and this so far up until this date, something else comes out, you know, and I have a go of it, then who knows, it might uh, blow things out of the water a little bit. But so far, the best ones I have used is this, the Calibre Innovation Siskar and the Schmeiser. I kind of went for the Schmeiser because it's got a bit of a pedigree and some of the military use them. Not that that's bothered and I'm not going down the mill spec road either, but I just, I don't know, I just wanted, I just wanted something that's kind of in service in a few countries. I don't know, it just gives it that extra sort of cool factor, doesn't it? But no, I really, really like these rifles. I have had, like I said, and like you've seen, I haven't had any real issues. It's just ammo, just, ex you just got to experiment, guys. Some, some rifles, you know, you could get one of these and it'll be like, it'll be literally like that, straight out with the, out of the box with your home reloads. Who knows? Who knows? Just experiment. Be patient. I always say that to people. Be patient when you sort of zero in and, you know, load developing and whatnot. Not that I reload. I've got to stress that, guys. I do not reload. Okay. So it's pretty easy for me. I just use factory ammo. I'm kind of like, you know, oh that one worked i'll keep that one that one worked i'll keep that one um uh, that one didn't work we won't have that um yeah that one was okay do you know what i mean guys that one really worked in fact that one did actually i've not got a i've not got a paper with this on what yeah they were 55 grain seikos but they're expensive uh, yeah, we won't be using too many of them either. So do you see what I mean, guys? Just just play about, experiment, and have fun. Fun with it all. Look at that, I'm being all arty again. I'm a, and I'm about to sort of leave you. But I love them. Real good fun to shoot. It's as good as it gets as far as center fire uh, AR-15s go and let me stress centerfire 
AR-15s go here in the UK. Uh, they just look totally cool. They don't look scary, do they? No, they're not scary. Spray it pink if you're worried about the snowflakes. Um, but no, really cool, really cool rifles. You, I don't think you'd be disappointed if you get one. I really don't think you'll be disappointed. I'm not with mine, I still have it a year on. Like I say, and like you've seen, still honing in, getting them groups tighter and tighter. It's all part of the fun. Anyway, guys, I'm going to leave it at that. Thanks for watching. That is Rack and Load. Make sure you are subbed. And if you're not, ask yourself, why not? Thanks for watching. That's Rack and Load. See ya.